It is the PowerPoint presentation of your textbook. The reason why we made it in a PowerPoint way is to simplify the study so that you can understand it more. So my name is Dr. Mira Kulaja. We stay here in Abuja at now headquarters. By the grace of God, we may have to meet one day, maybe when you are going to attend the graduation ceremony. And Amen. I wish to see you face to face. God will Amen. It happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I want to welcome you to the first interactive video of this course, um, CROS 313 Hebrew Grammar. Our topic today is why study biblical Hebrew? Uh, you can observe that in your textbook, that is unit number one. Why do one, we yes, study uh, biblical Hebrew? As you all know, Hebrew is the original language of the Old Testament. So that Bible you are using, it was originally written in Hebrew language, even though a part of it uh, was written in Aramaic. Aramaic is like a broken language. Like uh, English language, we have a broken English, which we call pidgin. Uh -huh. So uh, a smaller part of Old Testament was written in pidgin Hebrew, which is called Aramaic. And that type of um, Hebrew was spoken during the time of Jesus. At the time of Jesus, they were speaking Aramaic, meaning it wasn't like a pure Hebrew language. Then, this study, this particular lesson, will discuss some of the reasons why biblical Hebrew, why we study it, why it is very, very important. Because a lot of people keep saying, why study Old Testament? It is obsolete. Old Testament doesn't mean, Old Testament doesn't mean that it is useless or it is no longer relevant. So this particular lesson is like helping you to know why we should study uh, biblical Hebrew. The objectives. By the end of this lecture, you'll be able to discuss the importance of studying Hebrew grammar and then also appreciate the role of language and culture in understanding the history of a people. So if you want to understand the history of a particular group in Nigeria, one of the things that will help you go deeper is not just to study the, uh, the, 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 the history, it's to know about their language and culture because they are interrelated. And then um, it will also help us get several tips in mastering a biblical Hebrew. The reason why a lot of people uh, find Hebrew difficult to understand is that maybe they have not known the little techniques that will help them understand it. Sometimes Hebrew happens like um, uh, mathematics when you are attending it for the first time. Even before the lecturer comes, you have hated both the lecturer and the subject is coming to teach. That is how a lot of people approach Hebrew. Before they enter into the class, they are already afraid. So from day one, they will hate both the subject and the lecturer. But I want to plead with you, don't hate me, don't hate the subject. <laughs> so because um, <clears throat> we'll share with you few ideas on how to understand or master biblical Hebrew. Then we are going to also see a relationship between Hebrew grammar and the future of biblical scholarship in Africa. Africa. So these are the reasons why we study Hebrew. A good knowledge of Hebrew will facilitate a better translation and interpretation. A lot of people translate the Bible or interpret the Bible anyhow. When you know biblical Hebrew, you don't need to depend on a secondary source or somebody else to show you what that particular scripture is saying. So what I want to say in effect is that when you master biblical Hebrew, you are no longer attaching your understanding to somebody else. Because if a translator makes a mistake and you are using his translation, that means you continue with the mistake forever. 
But if you have a knowledge of that primary language with which the Bible was written, then you can see, you will understand it better. Then number two, Old Testament was written by Hebrews many, many centuries ago. So you need to understand it so that you can interpret it. It's like when I want to tell people about the use of um, King James Version Bible, you need skill to know how to translate or interpret King James Version English. Because a lot of people just think that um, King James Version is spiritual Bible. They call it Holy Ghost filled Bible. <laughs> Every other translation they say is canon. So when you are reading the Bible and you are not using King James Version, they will condemn you. But they don't know that before you can use King James Version effectively, you should also know how to interpret the English. Let me give you an instance. Very well. Somebody will say, um, concerning the works of my hand, command ye me. That is King James. And they will interpret it today to mean God is saying, if you want to receive anything from me, you can command me. Then somebody was leading in the prayer session and said, everybody begin to command God. Because he said, concerning the works of my hand, command ye me. So begin to command God. Oh. And you just laugh. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> it's a problem of misinterpretation. If you don't really understand the English of King James, you misinterpret it. So that's why we are advocating that people should understand Hebrew so that you don't misinterpret the Bible. A people's language is much related to their culture. So when you don't understand their culture, you cannot understand their language. To cross this cultural bridge, it is necessary for us to impart knowledge on this Hebrew because it's an ancient culture and actually the type of uh, Hebrew we are studying in the Bible is not what they are speaking today. You know, mm. every, every language is dynamic, but it's still the same Hebrew anyway. I, I, I'm just using the King James Version English as an illustration. Are you aware that we are no longer speaking the King James Version English today? We have modernized it. Uh -huh. So the same thing is applicable to Israel. If you go to Israel, this same character we are using to study Hebrew is what they are using. But it is modern Hebrew. That is not to say that the classical Hebrew is no longer relevant. They still use it. to Just like you still use um, King James Version English. I had to know about what happened or transpired at that time. Yes. So yes. Hebrew language is classical. So it requires study so that you can interpret it well. Then the next one is even Martin Luther. Excuse me, please. I'm sorry for that little disturbance. It's a phone that was, was there. Okay, so there was this man, a reformer, Martin Luther. He knew the importance of Hebrew language. He said, if I was, if I were younger, I would have loved to study the language so that he can interpret the scripture. So that will show you how important Hebrew grammar is. Okay, let me show us some of the tips if you want to understand this course. You are encouraged to follow the outline of study sequentially. So underline that word, sequentially. That means follow it systematically. Follow it systematically. You don't need to. You don't need to study unit one and you jump to study ten. Follow it, unit one, unit two, unit three, unit four, in that order. Because each unit will build on the previous unit. If you use that approach, you can understand it better. Number two, constancy in learning. It's very, very important. 
not necessarily spending long hours. A daily practice is recommended. You can bring out like one hour every day to study maybe a particular unit. Another day you study another unit. Make it regular. Don't study Hebrew once in a while. Study it every day like mathematics and you get used to it. Also study and practice what you study. Every unit of this um, textbook you have has an exercise. Self-assessment questions and uh, some marked assignments. All those assignments, try and do them. As you practice regularly, remember what they said, practice makes perfect. So the more you practice something, the more you get used to it. So I will encourage you, if you really want to master this subject, don't just do it once in a week or once in a month. Do it every day. Just dedicate little, little time to it. You may, you may not have to spend a long hour studying Hebrew. You are also encouraged to make an improvised vocabulary card. What do I mean by that? You can cut pieces of paper. On one side, you write the Hebrew character. At the back of it, you write the meaning of that character. But in this case, you want to learn vocabulary. Assuming you want to know the name for a king. A king in Hebrew is called Melech. So if you write in Hebrew Melech, then at the back of it, you write king. Or um, that same piece of paper, another one, you can write shalom. You go to the back and write peace. peace. Or another one, you write Torah. At the back of it, you write law. No. So as you mean you are traveling or you are just sitting down casually, all those vocabulary cards in your hand <coughs> can be flipping through it. Flipping through it. With time, you get used to all those words and they will register in your memory. That's a way I would like to encourage you to promote your knowledge of Hebrew vocabulary. You can also go online. Thank God for technology. You can see lectures like this, like this one I'm giving you. You can see other versions in the YouTube. Just type Hebrew and go to the particular lesson you want to study. It will also help you master Hebrew language. Now, what is the future of biblical scholarship in Africa? This our continent, our study of the Bible is still dependent on what other people gave us. So it's still reliant on secondary materials. So that's why we keep depending on what the translation say. Like we have NIV, King James Version, Revised Standard Version, American Standard Version. You will not see anywhere African Standard Version. So, Excuse me, sir. Yes. You will ask questions. Does it, when, uh, eh? does it, what you are saying now, does it also apply to commentaries? Yes, it's a secondary material. All of them, we call them secondary material because this is what somebody has said on a particular um, scripture or passage. So assuming the person was wrong and you only rely on him, you cannot have anything to fall back on. Meaning whatever error the person has, you perpetuate it. So the future of biblical scholarship in Africa can only happen when more people study Biblical Hebrew. Now, the great contributions of biblical scholars notwithstanding, undue reliance on translators' uh, version could tantamount into building a castle on a faulty foundation. So what we want to say here is, in as much as you make use of other translations or commentaries, but also note, if you don't have your own basic working knowledge of the original language, you are left at mercy to all those translations. If they are wrong, you will, you will expand their, 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 their error, which is not supposed to be. 
well, I don't want to bore you with this other example. Somebody, I don't know how many of you who watched one certain episode in those days, Lama Jugaj. So when they are doing, he was interacting with Oibo. He served as an intermediary between the Oibo and uh, his community. Oibo will say one thing in Oibo language, but Lama Jugaji will translate a different thing to the people. Uh -huh. So, and in the process, because the people didn't understand what the Oibo man was saying, they only depended on what the interpreter, and the interpreter was deceiving them. So we should know the um, Oibo language so that our biblical scholarship in Africa will have a future. Okay, I would like you to ask you at this point a self-assessment question. Then, if you want to answer, just uh, speak out from where you are. Just give me three reasons why we should study Hebrew grammar today. Just mention one now. Yes, whoever wants to speak to please just speak. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes, go ahead. Triumph. Uh, one of the reason is to enable us uh, is to enable us to do proper biblical interpretation. Good. Any other person? Sir, can you see me? Yes, I'm seeing you. Go ahead. Go ahead, Henry. Yes, sir. So my own is the the learning of the the letters. You know, some of the letters are corny, and then and, and some of the letters replicate themselves as if they are the same thing. And then they have different meanings. No, I will get there. I'm only asking you a question of, tell me what I have discussed with you so far. One of the reasons why we should study Hebrew grammar today. Okay, the reason why we should study Hebrew grammar is to help us give the people the right interpretation of the scripture uh, most especially let me give example because i was once a muslim so i can give example very well the islam study very well the arab the mm. arab writings and their pronunciation and that helps them not to mix up their interpretation they do not have different revelation when they want to interpret but when it comes to us mm. this one can give different different meanings to one same particular word. There are some certain words in Hebrew that can never be uh, to us as Gentiles, but we will interpret it to fit ourselves. Which exactly. Is wrong. Mm. That is where my understanding of the Hebrew comes to be important. Okay. I'm very grateful. Yes. Thank you. Um, my name is. If I. Yes, no. Uh, it, help, it helps us to understand the cultural differences, most especially when interpreting uh, the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's my own input. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, gentlemen, I am grateful that at least um, so far we are getting understanding in the lecture. So let me just conclude this part one. Um, this lecture discussed why the study of Hebrew grammar is necessary. It presented regular study as very, very important. Um, by that I mean, don't study Hebrew once in a while, study it all the time. And we also argue that the future of biblical scholarship in Africa is dependent on how much we have mastered Hebrew grammar. Next lecture, will focus on Hebrew alphabet. Okay, um, one of you wanted to ask a question on the Hebrew alphabet. How they seem confusing to you. Well, you can only overcome it through mastery. You can overcome it through familiarity. So just like I've told us to study uh, Hebrew, this is your Hebrew text. You should study it regularly. So when you keep looking at it from time to time, before long, you start identifying the differences. So meanwhile, when we go to the next study, we can have a look at some of these uh, alphabets and know how to overcome them. 
Does anyone have a question again before we go to the next study? Thank you very much. Okay, so I was asking if you have any question before we go to the next study. No question, sir. No question. Okay, God bless you. I want to go to study number two. Let's see how it goes. Um, Hello, sir. Yes. So I thought you said we should off our cameras so that we can have good network. That yes. Yes, is cracking. Some of our students, we have to do that. Uh, Henry Norman, please off your camera. Ajewale <laughs> Ebenezer, off your camera, please. Ajewale Ebenezer, off your camera. I'm also going to mute everyone. When it is time to speak, I will open up your voices again. So I don't want all those background noise again. So when I finish, I can now reopen it. Or if you want to speak, you reopen your own and then speak. Uh, Techno 18, LX, off your camera. Ajewale Ebenezer, please, off your camera. Okay. So we are talking about Hebrew alphabet, or you call it Hebrew consonant. That is lesson number two in your study material. So it has 22 letters. I'm sure you are acquainted with that already. Just like uh, English alphabet, how many letters does it have? Well, that is not before us. What we're studying now is Hebrew alphabet. It has 22 letters. In English language, vocalization is impossible without the vowel. What I mean by that is, it is impossible to pronounce a word in English if there are no vowel signs. In Hebrew, what they have is only consonants. They don't have vowel in the alphabet. So all the things you see in Hebrew alphabet, all of them are consonants. So, but the tradition of pronunciation came in place when particular scholars provided some uh, signs or marks or points that were added to the consonant to help somebody who is not in that tradition to know how to pronounce it. If you go to Israel now, all their write-ups, if you are watching their signboard, they, 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 they write their words in consonants only. See they themselves know how to pronounce it. They don't need the vowel signs. So the 22 letters has only consonants. There is no vowel sign. Okay. The Tiberian scribes were the people that provided that uh, vowel marks. So I'm going to explain them as we go on. There is no distinction of capital letters or small letters in Hebrew. It's just the letters, or you call them characters. Hebrew is written from right to left. I'm sure many of you have seen that. You don't write from left to right. English writes from left to right. But Hebrew, just like Arabic, writes from right to left. All the Semitic languages, of which Hebrew is one of them, they write from right to left. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to identify Hebrew alphabet, how to read it and how to write them. Um, you should also be able to recite the entire Hebrew alphabet in print. You can also transliterate 
Hebrew letters to English letters. What do I mean by transliteration? Just to give the equivalent of a particular language in another language. So one of the reasons for transliteration is to help you know how to pronounce a particular character you have seen. So I want to show you the alphabet as you've already seen in your course material. So this is the full table. So there is displayed the 22 um, Hebrew alphabet. Then I would like you to observe the direction of the arrow. The arrow is pointing from right to left, giving you the understanding that you read Hebrew from right to left. It is not like English that you read from left to right. So let that arrow be your guide. The English word that is associated with each Hebrew letter, you should also see it. For each column, there is an English word that is attached to the Hebrew alphabet. The reason why we attach it that way is to help you know how to pronounce that particular um, Hebrew letter. Then it is provided to aid your pronunciation of the Hebrew letter. Now start studying from right to left, from Aleph to Bet, in that order to the end. So if you are going from Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, He, Vav, Zion, Ket, Tet, Yod, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samek, Ayin, Pe, Sade, Kofresh, Senshin, Tav. So that is the Hebrew alphabet. So observe each Hebrew letter and read aloud and practice writing them one after another, beginning from Aleph. So what I want to say is that these 22 letters, each of them, just like you are learning ABC, on your own, practice how to read them. Read them aloud to yourself. You can equally download um, Hebrew alphabet uh, ringing tune so that each time somebody calls you, your phone will start reading Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, He, and so on. So that can be a way to master this language. Then follow the numbering. You can see numbering one, two, three, four, up to five. We usually refer to it as the numeric value of each letter. So each letter is associated with a numeric value. Like Aleph is associated with one, telling you that is the beginning, and it continues in that order up to 10. Then from 10, it will jump to 20. Calf is 20. From 20, um, it will jump to, okay, 60. 70, 80, 90, 100. Then from 100, it will jump to 200. Then from 200, it will jump to 300. You can see these two letters, sin and shin, have the same letter, meaning two of them are similar. They are related, they are brothers and sisters. Sin, shin, sin, shin, 300 each. And then the final one is tav. So all these numbers associated with these letters, we call them numerical. Uh, value. So it's not as important as learning the letters, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, and so on. Okay, so in trying to pronounce this alphabet, I would like you to read aloud Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, He, Vav, Zayin, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samech, Ayin, Pe, Sade, Kof, Resh, Sen, Shin, 
12. Okay, so I would like you to practice how to write and pronounce the Hebrew alphabet or consonant as we have done, as I'm reading them out. So please, have you seen that grid? I would like you to bring out a piece of paper, a plain paper, where you are now. And I would like you to copy what you have seen here. Well, we are still working on our whiteboard so that maybe next time I'm going to present this lecture, I will practice with the whiteboard inside this technology to see how I can write uh, these letters for you so that you know how it is done. So for Aleph, you begin from this end and go right word, and then you put a little mark by the right and a little mark on the left. That is Aleph. So when you draw a grid like this, you have to write the letter Aleph over and over again. Write it many times. That's why I am giving something like this. That little chart you have drawn for yourself, inside it, one, one rule like that, follow it all through with one alphabet. Get used to how to write it. Then you come to the second row. This one is bet. So see how the thing curves a little to the right and then the other one to the left. So you write it down all through. Then the same thing goes for Gmail. Gmail. So remember I said familiar, uh, you have to be familiar with these letters to know the difference. If you are not familiar with it, it will confuse you. Like this Gmail and Bet. If you don't check well, they look similar. Gmail and bet, they look similar. But with familiarization, you will get used to it. Then the next one is Dal um, Dalet. Sorry, this one is wrong. Uh, this particular rule, please ignore it. This thing I've just shown is ignore it. The right one is this here. Ignore this one because I am observing it now. It's a mistake. So the correct one is Dalet here. Then the next one is hair. Hair. It's like gold post that has a little opening towards the left, top left. Uh -huh. Hair. So that is what I want you to do. And we want to practice it now. So, with the help of the writing grid, practice the writing of the Hebrew consonant. So um, I want to see you do it now. Let's see whether it can work out. I'll do my own this way and show you. You should also do your own and show me. Are you there? So now I finished the lecture. Open your camera. I want us to practice uh, what I've just said. Um, I want to bring out a piece of paper like this. Also, get your own. Get a piece of paper like this. Okay, so I'm going to write something on it like the, the Aleph. Did you see what I wrote there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, everyone write your own and show me. Open your camera, write your own and show me. Write your own and show me. Uh -huh, triumph. Uh, focus your distance well, closer to your face. 
closer to your face. Uh -huh. That is it. Triumph. Um, Norman. Okay, that is it. I need more people to show me your own. Um, okay, okay, that is it. If I, okay, that is it. Uh huh. So, Taiwo, where is your own? You have not done. Okay, unmute your mic. Everyone can unmute their mic now and, and talk to me. Everybody, unmute your mic and then talk to me. Open up your microphone and talk, Taiwo. Switch, man. Just tap. No, I didn't. Hello, sir. Uh -huh. I'm just on. I just coming back online now. My phone oh, okay. just went off. I have okay. a power issue. Okay, okay sorry. Uh, now yes, I was going to show you how to write the Hebrew alphabet. So let me try this whiteboard to see whether it can work out now. Um, have you seen any whiteboard? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, please make sure you open your microphone. Um, it's just that this thing is not yet perfect the way it's supposed to be. But now, see, just watch the cursor. So that is, I want to write Aleph. I drew that first diagonal line and then did this one and then did this other one. So at least it's a little idea of what Aleph means. It's like letter N. Uh, almost like letter N, but you have to slant that diagonal line. Mm. Where. Mm. Are you getting me? So, you slant it that way. Okay. So that is it. Then the next letter is bet. Bet. Let me see. You go like this, this way. And so as if you are writing question sign but this question sign will have a base projection to the left yes, and a little to the right i hope you are getting me uh, hello sir yes hello sir mm -hmm. ask the question so can you see my hands? Yes, go ahead, Henry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, the, the thing is not like a question mark on my own booklet. Something. Uh, so that when you, when you see it, you mark it correctly. <laughs> How is it like? It, it, it's, like <laughs> it's like a C. The bed is like a C. Uh, uh, so uh, look closer. That's why I say how to really identify it it is like what i have just drawn you see a project yes, a, a, a little curve on the head yes sir. yes sir then when you go to the base the projection on the left is longer than the one on the right that's what i'm saying sir when you see it will you mark it like that that is what i'm saying now <laughs> this is what <laughs> that will help you understand how to write the bet if you want to get the printed um, the printed version the printed version that's why the keyboard already gives you the printed version actually in modern day hebrew what you write is no longer as important as what you type because with your with your keyboard the whole letter already is provided for you but i'm only giving you this as a way of learning how to do it so the third letter there is gmail so it's like 
an inverted y mm. it's like y that is turned upside down I've been trying to, yes uh, i've been trying to do it self not been able to do it. it's like an inverted y okay. so if you're using this method it may not be perfect but if you write it this way a lecturer knows that you are referring to gmail it may not be exactly what we have seen in the printed matter, but that is how it is done manually. So that is Gmail. Okay, so let me go to the D, that the Dalet. Dalet is as if you want to write seven. It leaves a little projection to the right. Mm. You know what I'm using is cursor, so it's not really straight. So what you are writing will be on top of the line. It shouldn't go below the line. If it goes below the line, you are referring to another letter. It should so be on top is, of it. Eh? It should be on top of that. Of that, of that line. It shouldn't uh, go beyond the line. line. Mm. If it goes beyond the line, you are writing another letter. It should be on top of the line. So, if you are writing the other one, hey, hey, it's like a goalpost, hey, hey. Okay. but this goalpost, you don't cover the top left, no. okay. you leave it a little open. You don't cover it completely. email okay so i want to stop the so far so you can see we have practiced how to write the aleph the aleph bet gmail dalet hey okay i've done my own i want you to do your own and show me so with that that sheet i've just shown you now so show me your own now let's see the much we have done Aleph. So follow one rule and write Aleph repeatedly. I'm done with my own. So one rule. One, one rule. rule and write Aleph. I'm trying to write my own here so that you will also see. Alabet Gmail then Dalet. Mine is ready, sir. Triumph. Okay. Mine is also ready. It's fine. Just show me, show me, show me, show me. Uh -huh, good. That is it. That is it. Good, good, good. Uh, if I, that is it. Um, try off. That is it. Harry, I'm still waiting. And, yes, I'm uh, going to show you now. Ebenezer, uh, Ajewole, where is your own? Okay. So this one is my own. Awesome. Okay. So I see mine. Uh -huh. Have you seen mine? You are talking, you are talking. That is it. Yes, yes, yes. That is it. Uh, Have take you no, seen mine? Next time, take no proof. Uh, I'll be proof here. Always uh, register with your name, please. Register with okay, your name. I can call you by name, not with your okay. phone. Okay. Have you seen? 
I've seen your own. Congratulations, you got it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, it's enough. Um, any question from anybody? If you want to ask a question, uh, you yes, sir. I have, yes, I have a question, sir. Yes, I have a question. Go ahead. Yes, sir. The, yeah, the alphabet following the diagram you showed us, we I counted 23. Why you said it's 22? Uh -huh. So, if you followed my explanation, so what is a, the difference? We have a twin brother down there, same shin, same shin. They have the same numerical value. Check that alphabet again. Check your uh, handout. Beautiful, beautiful. That same shin has 300, 300, 300, meaning they are brothers and sisters. Okay, sir. Okay, they are counted sir. as one. Okay. Yes. Okay, it's understood. Go ahead. Yeah. Any other question? I, sir, I will write my own letter. I have a bad network here. Okay, so I'm asking all of you to upgrade to G4. G4, and uh, let your phone be a good phone too. And um, if you check your network and it's not working fine, try another network. We have MTN. What I'm using here is 9 Mobile. 9 Mobile is quite okay for me. You can equally check the one that is suitable for you in your location. Okay. When do you think we can have the next class? Give us your own time, sir. I am ready Monday. I'm also ready Wednesday. I'm ready Friday. For next week, we can do three times if you want. Thank you very Thank much, sir. We're grateful. That would be good. Monday. Wednesday, uh, Monday, yes, Wednesday, and Friday. 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 Okay, Time Time time, sir. All by time, this sir. time, by this time, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Network is friendly in the morning sir. than in the evening. Okay, so okay, but you have to do me a favor, okay, sir. This assignment I say you should do. Snap your own with your camera. Snap it with your camera. I'm going to open um, a WhatsApp page for all of us. We're going to have a group WhatsApp. Okay, sir. That group WhatsApp, when you snap Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, and uh, Friday. Friday. When you snap the, the assignment I've asked you to do, Friday. Post, post it to me by WhatsApp on the group chat I'm going to open now. I'm okay, going to sir. open the group chat for all of okay, us so that okay. if I have information, when I post one, everybody will already see it. I don't need to okay, sir. I don't need to be sending to you one 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 one. So I want to open just one platform for all of you. Okay. Okay. So no problem, sir. When you do your own assignment, eh? <clears throat> Snap it and post. That will help me know that assignment you are you? the instruction you are doing the assignment for me. Okay, sir. When you snap this Hello, thing sir. that you are doing now, snap it, and then you post it to my uh, to that WhatsApp page. Harry, sir, you are raising your hand. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, sir. I have my question. Is I want this. to ask something, sir. Is it? I just want to wait. I just want to wait. Let um, Henry answer first. Uh, ask his question. Uh, are you asking us to do this alphabet as an assignment? Is yes. it all of it we are going to do? Mm -hmm. We snap it. Is it? I don't all mean all of them. Just do, do just do one page. Just do one page. Just do one page. Anyone that can enter within your one page. Okay, the one you taught us, the ones you taught us. That's what you want us. Uh, go beyond what I taught you. Go beyond what I taught you. I only thought uh, I demonstrated uh, from Alec. Sir, I have a question, sir. From Alec to her. To her. Hold on. Uh, but I'm asking you to go beyond her. Try the other ones too. Okay, okay sir. So, but only sir, one page. Uh, Snap it and send yes. Sir, I have a question, sir. Go ahead. Sir, 
I, I, I want you to give me your phone number because if somebody sent this link to me, I did not even have your phone number, sir. Do you know how to read chat where you are now? I can't hear. Sir? Do you know how to read chat? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let me type my number to you now. 0806-034-0312. So is there in the chat uh, column? If you see the chat, I've just given to you the number. 0806-034-0312. I'm, I'm here to see the chat. Uh, check your um, phone, you will see it. Okay. Yeah. So I will send you my email, sir. Okay. So I'm using laptop now. Laptop is better. With laptop, you can see all the features. Exactly. Sir. If all of and you then I want to know when uh, uh, you talk you talk about the uh, uh, assignment, which page? Because uh, when the, the when you are talking about it, so the line network is bad here. No, we did a demonstration here. Just get a plain sheet like this. But you are just play. I see the plain, plain sheet. Uh -huh. I then see write any... on the alphabet. Go to that grid section. The alphabet. Write Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, He, Vav. So for each row, keep repeating. One word like Aleph, you repeat it several times. You go to Bet, you repeat it several times. You go to uh, Gimel, you repeat it several times until you get to the end of the page. And just snap that page and post okay, it sir. to the WhatsApp page. And I'm going to okay. open um, a group chat for uh, yeah a group um, WhatsApp platform for for this group. Yes, uh -huh. So please, if you if you have not received any message from me, or you are not on WhatsApp yet, you can equally text me your WhatsApp number so that I will add you to the list. Okay, sir. Hey, Benito Sunday, you were raising up your hand. Okay, I've what of Odu Samo Aderibe. No, I'm true. I'm true, sir. I'm... Okay, thank you. Thank you. So please, we are going to have another class on Monday. On Monday, yes, sir. By eight o'clock, Wednesday, eight o'clock, okay. Friday, eight o'clock. Okay, sir. We are doing all these things so that you'll be fully prepared for the exam whenever they are. Okay, sir. Sir, so I've already sent the email, sir. Okay, no problem. I will see it. I've yes, seen sir. it here. Um. Yes. Yeah, we should also know how to interact with the features on this Zoom. Because while we are doing the lectures, you can send me a message through chat. Very you well. Send a message through chat. You can equally interact with fellow students. And uh, maybe uh, Henry may want to send yes. to Ajewole. So when you click on that person's name, then you can send a direct chat to the person. Okay. Okay, thank you everybody for this inaugural lecture. By the grace of God, I'm thinking that it will grow and will grow in experience. And this time around, all of us will get here because God will help us to do well in the Amen. Name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 So thank you. Bye bye. And God bless thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. See you on Monday. Yes, sir. Bye bye. Yes, sir.